The patient in this video was diagnosed with a locally invasive rectal carcinoma and had received neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy prior to surgery. The defect seen on the right results from the abdominoperineal excision performed in the extra levator plane, the abdominal part of the procedure being performed laparoscopically. In order to restore the integrity of the pelvic floor, reconstruction was performed using the gracili muscles, which were reflected from their distal insertion into the pelvic defect. The gracilis is the most superficial muscle within the adductor compartment of the thigh. It originates from the ischiopubic ramus and inserts inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia, as part of the three tendons collectively known as the pes and serenus. It is a unipennate muscle. Preservation of the neurovascular supply in perineal reconstruction prevents atrophy of the gracilis muscle over time. In the majority of cases, the muscle receives its blood supply from the adductor branch of the profunda femoris artery although the contribution of the medial circumflex artery may predominate in some cases. The vascular pedicle is relatively consistent in its location, situated approximately 8 to 10 centimetres inferior to the pubic tubercle. The muscle is innervated by the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. The position of the gracilis is marked with a line drawn from the ischial tuberosity to the medial condyle of the tibia. The initial skin incision is made 8 cm below the ischial tuberosity and extended. The incision is continued through the subcutaneous tissue and the deep fascia. The muscle is mobilised from the loose areola tissue which surrounds it and separates it from the other muscles, particularly the adductor longus, using diathermy to cauterise any small vessels. Care is taken to avoid the long saphenous vein and medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The distal tendon is followed subcutaneously to its insertion inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia. The overlying skin and subcutaneous tissue are incised and the tendon is isolated. Confirmation that the correct tendon has been identified can be ascertained by pulling on the muscle belly as demonstrated. The tendon is divided using diathermy. This now allows the muscle to be reflected. The dissection is continued proximally, following closely the body of the muscle. Small perforating vessels may be seen entering the deep surface of the muscle throughout its length. These can be ligated without compromise of its vascular supply. We see the neurovascular bundle entering the muscle on its deep surface. The obturator nerve is often seen entering 2 cm proximal to this point. The process is repeated on the contralateral side. Again, the vascular pedicle is highlighted. A tunnel is developed between the perineal defect and the medial compartment of the thigh using diathermy through the deep fascia. Forceps are passed through the tunnel, allowing delivery of the gracilis muscle into the perineal defect. Care is taken not to twist the muscle, which could potentially compromise the blood supply. The skin incision of the thigh is closed in layers with a subcutaneous 14 French gauge suction drain in place. The gracili muscles are woven together and fixed to the distal sacrum and coccyx using 2O monofilament permanent sutures. As gracilis is a unipennate muscle, the tendons lie centrally and the muscle bellies laterally, allowing the reconstruction to have a central tendon. The muscles then attach to the origin of the levator ani. As the muscle remains innervated, atrophy does not occur and hernia formation is reduced. We believe that this technique represents an elegant method for long-term pelvic floor reconstruction.
especially in those patients undergoing laparoscopic abdominal surgery and those post chemo radiotherapy or with large perineal excisions. Patients immobilised on day one and avoid sitting directly on the wound through the use of specialist cushions. The drains are removed once mobility is independent.